Layers are important for many reasons, and so every graphic arts class you take where you're talking about software like InDesign or Illustrator or Photoshop, you're always going to learn about layers because they are something that you should be using. It's good practice. And so we'll talk about some reasons to use layers, and the, the importance is going to be different from different software applications. And so if you've taken my InDesign class, there was a slide on one of the lectures that said the importance of layers for InDesign, and the reasons that we would use them in InDesign are slightly different than the reasons we would use them in Photoshop. So even if you think that you're you're accustomed to using layers, just pay attention to the next few minutes of the lecture in case something pops up that you're unfamiliar with. And so layers are useful in Photoshop to separate and organize document contents and to allow for easier editing. You can also apply various effects to some but not, not all the documents. So you can isolate things on layers and you can make edits to just part of the content. And so some but not all the layer features that we're going to talk about are the idea of creating new layers for new content or moving existing content to new layers for separation purposes. Again, maybe you want to edit it, you want to change a color of something, or you want to add an effect, but you only want to do it on part of the image. You can rename and you can color label layers for organization. You can also reposition, restack, and group them. Um, you want to be the person that when you give a file to someone, they're like, wow, this is an organized file. I don't have to spend a year and a half trying to figure out what they were trying to communicate or where they put something. If I'm looking to update a logo in a file and I open a file and one of the layers is labeled um, logo, I know exactly where to go. I can turn all the other layers off and I can isolate where the logo is at. Um, when you don't label your layers and you don't group them, you don't organize them so that it's easier for anybody to understand, not just you opening up your own file, then you're just causing more headache down the line for someone who may potentially have to work with your same files. Um, you can also delete unwanted layers if you create too many. Um, you can get rid of them. You can merge multiple layers into one layer, so maybe you isolate things for editing and then you decide that you need to merge them back together for some other task. You can also do that by grouping them. You can show and hide a layer, and so if you're not working on a particular part of a project at, at, at a specific time, you can basically turn it off so you don't see it, so you don't accidentally edit um, an area that you're not meaning to edit. You can also lock and unlock layers for the same idea. If you lock something, you can't accidentally edit over the top of it. You can also do some fun stuff like change the layer opacity or the blending modes so you can affect how layers interact with one another. And then you can apply layer effects to layers, which can be kind of a quick way to kind of add a pop of something to your project that makes it stand out. And so the first thing that we want to talk about is creating a new layer so that you can create new content or you can add content to that layer. And there are lots of ways to do everything in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you maybe one or two ways. Um, if you know a different way, then obviously use a different way. I try to show you what I feel is the easiest, most straightforward way. Um, but if you're more comfortable using menus at this point in time where I'm going to use buttons on the layers panel, by all means, if you know how to use a layer, just make a new layer. And so the first thing I want to talk about is anytime you see the little piece of paper with the corner turned up on a panel, it means new. And so if it's on the layers panel, you're going to create a new layer. If you're on the color swatches panel, you're going to create a new color swatch. If you're on the styles panel, you're going to create a new style. And so for our purposes, if I select the new icon, I'm going to get a new layer. Some key things to know about this are that it is going to be new it's going to appear directly above the layer that you currently have selected. So I have the background layer selected, and so layer one will go above it. If I was to create a layer two, and I select the background layer and select new layer, it would go above the background layer, and so it would be below layer one and above the background. If I left it the way it is now, where layer one is selected, and I select create a new layer, layer two would be above layer one. It's not the end of the world, just make the layers, and you can always drag and drop them into place. But if you want to make sure that they are created where you want them, when you want them created, make sure that you're selecting the right layer because the new layer will always go above whatever layer is selected. Um, when you create new layers, you don't have to create a blank layer. You can create layers from existing content. And so maybe I want to do some sort of manipulation on the ice cream cone in this image. And so I want to isolate the ice cream cone from the background so that I'm not making the edits on all of all of the document. Maybe I want the background image to be desaturated a little bit and I'm going to apply a filter to the ice cream so it looks cool and funky and, and unique. And so in order to do that I could create a new layer and I could move the content to that layer and then I could just make the changes to that one layer. The steps that you would do, there's actually two things that you could try. 
well, there's probably more than two things, but the two ways that we're going to talk about when I jump over to Photoshop are you can create a new layer and then you can make a selection from the content that you wish to move. In my case, I made a selection of the ice cream cone. You can choose edit copy. So I have the background layer selected and I choose edit copy. Then you can click the new layer and choose edit paste and it will paste a copy of the artwork onto the new layer. You could also choose edit cut and then you could choose edit paste onto the new layer. When you do that, you'd end up with a hole in the image. And so don't delete that if you don't need to because layer two is gonna sit in front of layer, um, layer one anyway, or in this case, layer two is gonna sit in front of the background layer. So even if you left the original ice cream cone behind it, nobody's ever gonna see it at this point unless you made the ice cream cone transparent. Another way that might be a little bit easier um, because you don't have to create a layer and copy and paste is you can make that same selection and you can right click on the selection and you can choose to create a new layer, uh, a new layer via copy or a new layer via cut. And so if you choose layer via copy, it will basically do the same thing as the first example where it makes a new layer and it copies the content. And if you choose layer via cut, it's going to leave a hole in the background, but it will paste the information into a new layer. However you want to do that is fine for now. Um, the idea is that you can move the content onto a new layer. Now there's also more ways that we'll learn when we talk about selections and masking and things like that. Like you can paint, you can copy um, content from one layer to another layer by painting. And so if you created a blank document, um, not a blank document, a blank layer, and you say I'm going to copy or paint the content from the background, as you create your brush strokes, you could paint it onto the new layer. But that's more advanced than we're going to get into for today. And so let's jump to Photoshop and let's practice these three things that we just talked about. So we're going to create new layers where we could create original content and then we're going to create a new layer from existing content. And so I've got that image open and I've converted my layer to background um, layer to layer zero but I don't, that's not the practice that I like to do. And so I'm going to undo that. I did command Z to undo or you can do edit undo or you could just quit out of the image and hit don't save and then reopen it if you want to. And so I'm going to duplicate so I have two layers. And so I don't want to work on the background layer. I'm going to save that as backup. And then I'm going to work from the background copy. And so when you create a new layer for editing, let's say that you wanted to add some text or um, that's a bad example because if you add text it automatically creates stone layer. But maybe you wanted to, to paint something in the image or something. You could create a new layer by selecting the new layer icon. It would automatically add it. It added it above the background copy because that's a layer I had selected. And now if I wanted to do something like, I'm going to grab a paintbrush here. Let's grab color. Maybe you wanted to paint some sort of funky texture that eventually is going to be behind our ice cream. You could paint that on its own layer and you could reposition it by dragging and dropping it. I'm going to leave it up the top for now, but it's in the way, so I'm going to hit the little eyeball and turn it off. You could also say, okay, well, I want to have, I want to have the background with the sky, and then I want my funky pink texture to be behind the ice cream cone, and then I want the ice cream cone to sit in front of it. If that's the case, then you might want to use that second option we talked about where you're going to make a layer from selected content. And so I'm still going to turn the eyeball off on the layer, but now I'm going to make a selection. And so I'm going to grab my lasso tool and I'm going to make a rough selection of this ice cream cone. You want to probably be a little bit more careful than I'm being, but I'm still not going to worry about the outside. Um, for the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to worry about that. But when we talk about selections and masking, I'll show you how to make a rough selection and then refine it so you don't have to get in really close and, and go all the way around the edge of a selection. That's just too time consuming for me. And so now if I wanted to isolate the ice cream cone on its own layer, I could create a new layer, right? I could copy, edit copy or command C or control C. Oops, make sure that you're on the layer you want to copy. So I was on layer two, which is blank, so I got a prompt saying that I can't copy if there's nothing there. And so I'm copying from the background layer, so that must be selected. And now I can choose edit copy, or you could choose cut. So if you choose cut, it would disappear. I wouldn't recommend that, so edit copy. Then you can select layer two, and when you choose edit paste, the content will be moved to that page. Now it's still there. If I turn the eyeball on and off, you can see that 
the original ice cream cone is still on the background layer. But since this one sits in front of it, now we could manipulate that separately. Okay, let's undo that. Edit step backward or edit undo. Um, what I think is the easier way is to have the layer selected that has the content, make your selection, and then if you right click, you can choose to create a new layer via copy. And it will automatically create that new layer. If I turn the eyeball on on my pink layer, you can see it just went one above the layer I had selected, so I'd have to drag it and drop it to reposition it in the place that I want for the project. Okay, I'm going to move on to the lecture. Keep this, don't delete this, because we're going to use the same file throughout the lecture. So we'll pick up with the slideshow in the next video.